So it's not like it has been there forever. It's been there since 1962. I mean, not 1862, when the Confederacy existed, right, and was waging war on the United States. It has not been there since 1862. They put it up in 1962. In the early 1960s, they put up the Confederate flag in South Carolina, flying over the Capitol Dome during the Civil Rights Movement of the 1960s. And because of the Civil Rights Movement of the 1960s, it was put up, and based, politically, it is clear from the context of the time, it was put up as a symbol of resistance to desegregation in the early 1960s as South Carolina and the rest of the Deep South burned and marched and lit up with gunfire and bombings and beatings and intimidation and rage in that catalyzing and epic fight that we had as a country to try to desegregate the South. South Carolina state government made a decision to put up the Confederate flag over its state capital in 1962, basically as a way of saying that their state would not desegregate. But then after the civil rights era, after the segregation issue was settled, at least in polite company, and the civil rights side supposedly won, South Carolina didn't take down the flag. They left it up over the Capitol Dome. And for a very long time, that was awkward and difficult for all the obvious reasons. And South Carolina was not alone in the South in flying that flag, but the, the, the fight there has been particularly loud and hard fought and particularly tenacious in large part because the Confederate flag has been great politics for conservative politicians who have used that issue and that symbol to court white voters in South Carolina by supporting the Confederate flag, by supporting symbols of the old Confederacy. This weekend, part of the outpouring of grief over the massacre of African-American churchgoers in Charleston last week, part of the effort to grieve those victims and express a collective anguish about that crime, a collective revulsion for what happened at the Mother Emanuel Church, part of that this weekend, in a fairly impromptu way, spilled over out of the formal vigils and church services uh, into this gathering on a bridge in downtown Charleston, this big, beautiful, modern bridge, which is called the Arthur Ravenel Bridge, uh, this is Arthur Ravenel. He was a Republican state senator from South Carolina. His name is on that bridge. He is celebrated in South Carolina for his political career. And Arthur Ravenel's political career is best remembered for his impassioned defense of the Confederate flag continuing to fly at the state capitol in South Carolina. You see this picture there? See in the background there? Do you see how it's kind of a strange looking background for him at this rally? What that is is actually a massive Confederate flag, several stories tall, that has been laid out on the steps of the State House to serve as a backdrop for him leading this rally in favor of the Confederate flag in South Carolina in January 2000. Here, it's easier to see in color. Look. Oh, right. That's the guy who the bridge is named after. And at the time this picture was taken, at the time Senator Ravenel was leading this pro-Confederate rally in South Carolina, he was not just ginning up support for the flag and the symbols of the Confederacy, he was reaping the political rewards of doing so. I mean, if you're a conservative politician in South Carolina all of these years, it has really helped to be a staunch defender of the Confederate flag and it flying at the state capitol. Two years before this rally, uh, in 1998, South Carolina voted out an incumbent Republican governor named David Beasley after Governor Beasley said that he wanted to remove the Confederate flag from the state capitol grounds. After he said that, he lost his seat. They threw him out of office over that. In 1994, the state legislature had tried to get rid of the Confederate flag over the Capitol. It failed in 1995. They tried again. It failed in 1997. They tried again. It failed the following year in 1998. That effort to get rid of that flag claimed the incumbent Republican governor. I mean, it had been bad politics. It has been bad politics for white conservative politicians to be against the Confederate flag in that state. It has been good politics for conservative politicians to be for the Confederate flag. And that dynamic has been bolstered by the fact that South Carolina has this peculiar national political position as one of the early voting presidential states. South Carolina, first in the South, right? I mean, it's Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina. And so after that Republican governor got turfed out in South Carolina, in 1998, as, as the NAACP was coordinating a big economic boycott of South Carolina over them flying that Confederate flag, as State Senator Arthur Ravenel was holding his rally in front of the 100-foot-tall Confederate flag laid out on the steps of the state capitol. In the year 2000, George W. Bush and John McCain were battling it out in South Carolina to try to win the Republican nomination for president. And so they, they very knowingly strolled right up to this Rubicon, right? Would supporting the Confederate flag 
remain just a political asset for South Carolina conservatives? Or would it become a national conservative cause too? John McCain, in a hemming and hawing way, sort of tried to refuse to say what he thought on the issue. But at the same time, he played to his politics, played to, played to the issue's politics. When he was asked about South Carolina's Confederate flag, he made sure to reference his own role in opposing the Martin Luther King holiday being recognized in Arizona. He then went on to say that the issue of the Confederate flag was a state's rights issue for South Carolina. Who was he to tell South Carolina they ought to take that Confederate flag down? Are you saying if, it I were, stand? if I were a South Carolinian, I would make a choice. In Arizona, we had a big fight over the Martin Luther King holiday. I didn't like it when people came in and told us what to do in Arizona when, about the Martin Luther King holiday. But, you, but you've, weighed in on others, tell, you've weighed in on other state issues in the past. On this issue, I have not weighed in, and this issue is not going to be helped by me weighing in on it. I mean, you've said, you said in the past when you were mm -hmm. asked about it on Nightline, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. if you were president, what would you say? And you claim that Bill Clinton had not told the people of South mm -hmm. Carolina what mm -hmm. to do. But yesterday mm -hmm. in Boston, President Clinton said mm -hmm. he thought the flag should be taken down. Mm -hmm. Given I understand that, that he, would he would say that, and I appreciate that. I, my view is that uh, I think that the people of South Carolina are best qualified to make the decision. John McCain speaking in January 2000 in the midst of that mighty battle for the presidential nomination, particularly the South Carolina primary coming up in the Republican presidential nominating race. He was fighting it out with George W. Bush for that nomination, and particularly to try to win that primary. George W. Bush took basically the same line as John McCain on the issue. Who am I to tell South Carolina they ought to take that Confederate flag down? But because George W. Bush, we forget now, was a very, very good politician, although he took the same line as John McCain did, he sounded way better when he did it. As an American citizen, do you have a visceral reaction to seeing the Confederate flag? As an American citizen, I trust the people of South Carolina to make the decision for South Carolina. Cheers, cheers for no one telling South Carolina to take down that Confederate flag. Not long after he lost the South Carolina primary to George W. Bush, uh, and then he dropped out of the race. And South Carolina ultimately decided to take the Confederate flag off the state capitol dome and move it instead to what is frankly a more prominent place at a Confederate memorial right on the state capitol grounds in front of the state house, right on a main drag that you drive through in downtown Columbia. Right after all that, John McCain, after he lost, after South Carolina moved the flag to a different part of the state capitol grounds, John McCain said he shouldn't have did what he did there. He said he was ashamed of himself for how he had tried to play that issue in South Carolina. He basically said he was pandering for votes. And he didn't really believe that South Carolina should keep flying that flag, but he didn't feel comfortable saying so during the campaign. Once George W. Bush had served his two terms as president and John McCain was once again running to try to win the Republican Party's presidential nomination, his rivals in the 2008 primaries used John McCain's contrition on the Confederate flag, him going soft on the Confederate flag, they used it against him in the 2008 presidential race. You don't like people from outside the state coming and telling you how you ought to raise your kids. You don't like people from outside the state coming down and telling you what to do with your flag. In fact, if somebody came to Arkansas and told us what to do with our flag, we'd tell them where to put the pole. That's what we'd do. Mike Huckabee running for president in 2008 saying South Carolina should vote for him and not John McCain because he would never criticize the Confederate flag flying at that state capitol. Not like some. That was 2008. Now, after the Charleston massacre, after the confessed shooter posted his start a race war screed online and posted all those myriad photos of himself with the Confederate flag, after all those years in South Carolina fighting about the Confederate flag being flown at the State House, all those years of conservative politicians in the state and conservative politicians from around the country supporting the Confederate flag in order to get white people in South Carolina to vote for them, after all of these years, this massacre finally started to crack the dam and you could see it start to break with old Mike Huckabee himself. For those of us running for president, everyone's being baited with this question as if somehow that has anything to do whatsoever with running for president and my position is it most certainly does not says the man who last time he ran for president ran in south carolina on not just supporting the confederate flag flying at the capitol but also suggesting what people could do with the flag pole if they disagreed 
Now he finds the subject inappropriate for comment by a presidential candidate. See, you can see the dam breaking on this issue in the person of old Mike Huckabee, trying once again to find political advantage on this issue, but now he doesn't know where to find it. You can see the dam breaking when other flags, uh, the other flags on the state capitol grounds in South Carolina, the, the American flag, the South Carolina flag, they were lowered to half staff in the wake of the Charleston massacre last week, while that Confederate battle flag stayed at full staff on the capitol grounds. Maybe that's when the dam actually started to break. But after 50 years of not just fighting about that flag, but conservative politicians statewide and nationwide banking on the conservative flag, in order to, uh, on, on the Confederate flag, in order to get votes from white people who like it in South Carolina. After decades of that, finally today, the dam broke. One of the politicians who was there when that happened joins us next.